Hi, I'm Dr. Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to this lesson on problem solving techniques. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at weighted moving averages. So what are our objectives for this lesson? Um, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to do the following. First of all, define what is meant by a weighted moving average. Then we're going to get you to use a weighted moving average to make predictions. We're also going to distinguish between forecast and actual demand. And finally, we're going to use a weighted moving average to visualize trends over time. So weighted moving average is a predictive technique, section 8 in our curriculum. And in this section, we have two techniques, a simple moving average, which was the subject of the previous lesson, and the weighted moving average, which we're going to look at here. It should be said that the lessons for both these are very, very similar. The formula that you see here for the weighted moving average is the main difference between the two different types. But let's take a look at a weighted moving average. As always, let's start out with a, an inspiring quote. This one comes from fellow Irishman, uh, James Vincent McMorrow, who is uh, a singer and songwriter. And he once wrote, the idea of trying to predict what people will or won't respond to is risky. So in other words, making predictions is a risky business. And some people say we shouldn't do it at all. Uh, we can't tell the future. Uh, but uh, with a weighted moving average, we have a simple technique that help us uh, in some way to make at least some basic predictions. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So what is a weighted moving average? Well, it's a simple time series analysis method of forecasting. It helps us to look at patterns over a period of time. So a time series analysis is, as the name suggests, analyzing data over a time, time period. It helps us remove variations and make predictions. And it's also very, very useful at smoothing. And as I mentioned already, uh, there are two types, simple and weighted moving average. So this subject of this lesson is the weighted moving average. So let's say you want to estimate demand for a future time period. And one of the simple ways of doing this, we could average the demand for a number, uh, three to seven usually, of most recent time periods. So uh, let's say we've got uh, actual data for January, February, March. This could be stock levels, it could be sales data, uh, anything like that. And I'd like to be able to use this data uh, to make a prediction for April, in other words, the next time period. So at the end of March, I've got all my actual um, uh, sales data or stock levels. Uh, can I predict what do I need or what can I expect for the month of April? And with a weighting moving average, yes, you can. So let's take a look at what how it works out. So I've got my three time periods across the top up here, January, February, and March. And what I want to be able to do is make a prediction for uh, April over here. So this is going to be the forecasted time. And you can see I've got my three months, so we're do, using a three-point weighted moving average here. So I've got data for March, February, and January. And note I put them backwards in here because you'll see this in a moment when I want to work out the calculation. But the big difference and the main difference between this technique and the simple moving average is that we are adding in a weighting. So in the, this case here, I'm giving a weighting of three to March. So whatever the value is for March, I'm going to multiply it by three. Then I'm giving it a slightly less weighting for February because it's a further out time period. So I'm giving it a weighting of two. And finally, the um, um, January figure, which is the furthest figure out, uh, I'm only giving it a weighting of one and multiplying it by one. And whereas in the simple moving average, the number of time periods that you would have, uh, three in this case here, you would add them together and simply divide by three. In a weighted moving average, you divide by the sum of the weights. So the weight of three, weighting of three, plus a weighting of two, plus a weighting of one, equals six. So we divide by the sum of the weights. Let's now convert this um, um, rough formula into something a little bit more meaningful. So it's the same formula as I have uh, up at the top of the diagram here. And in the time weighted moving average time series formula, I've got two values, a forecasted value and an actual value. So the forecasted value F, so F for T, so the forecasted value for time April, it's equal to, in this case, uh, I'm using weightings of 3, 2, and 1 here, but you can use any values that you like, anything that you think appropriate. And if you do this in a spreadsheet, you can obviously change these values and do some what if if you want. So I'm giving a weighting of 3 to the first most recent time period, the actual T minus 1, which is March. So March is the month before April. Then I'm giving a weighting of 2 to the actual T minus 2, which is February, multiplying that by 2. And then the furthest out um, time period, in this case is January, I'm giving it a weighting of just 1, so 1 multiplied by actual T minus 3. And as before, you can see I'm dividing that by 6, because 3 plus 2 plus 1 
is equal to 6. So if I had weighting, say, of you know 4.5, 4.4, and 4.3, I would add those up and divide by that number in this case here. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, here's some uh, sales figures data, which I've made up for this lesson, and it shows some fictitious data for the 12-month period for the year 2022. The actual demand, these are the actual figures. So at the end of each month, I record the actual figures. So in this case here, what, what, how many units were sold or in during each month? And we've got that data here. And then what we want to do is, can we use these data to make a prediction for January 2023? So I might need this for uh, budgetary purposes. If these figures were stock levels, I might need to know, well, what stock levels should I expect to keep in for demand for January and so on. So this is the difference between actual demand and forecasted demand. So we want to be able to forecast and calculate using a weighted moving average for that. So let's spread the data out a little bit more here. These are the same data in the first three columns as I had on the previous picture. And I've now added in a column to calculate the three-month or three-point moving weighted moving average. It's the three-month moving average here because these figures are based on months. So I've got my uh, weighted moving average formula up here. And for the moment, I'm sticking with weightings of three, 2 and 1, which means I divide by 6. So in calculating the weighted moving average for the month of April, I need to take the three previous figures. So in my formula here, the forecast for time t, which is April, it's equal to 3 multiplied by 9,433. So where did we get that? t minus 1 is March, the figure is 9,433. Then we add that then to a weighting of 2 multiplied by a figure of 6,892, which is the February figure, that's actual t minus 2. And I think you're getting the trend here. Add this again, a weighting of 1 for uh, on the figure of 8,938, which you can see is January, which is actual t minus 3. So we add those three values, divide them by the sum of the weights is equal to 6, and we get a predicted value for April of 8,533. Now, the useful of this is, of course, as you can see, that we are giving more prominence to the most recent time period. So in other words, making a prediction for April, we're giving much, much more value to the March figure. Slightly less for the February figure and slightly less again for the January figure. So these weightings, as I say, can be changed by you to suit your needs. So we've got a predicted value of 8,503 for April. We move on then down along the line, we copy the same formula down and all the values are moved down with us until we get a value for January of 10,693. How do we calculate that figure? Let's look at the formula. Again, I'm using a three month moving average with weightings of three, two and one, which means I, again, I divide by six. So the forecast for time T, which is January, 2023, is equal to a weighting of three multiplied by the figure 11,055, which is the figure for T minus one, which is December. Add that then to a weighting of 2 multiplied by a figure of 10,813. And that's at the figure T minus 2, which of course is for November. And finally, we add then with a weighting of 1, uh, multiply that by the figure 9,405, which we can see from our table is the actual for T minus 3, which is October. Perform those calculations, add them all up, and divide by 6, which is the sum of the weights, which means we have a forecasted value for January of 10,699. So that then can give us an idea of what sales we can expect, or if this was stock levels, what level of stock should I keep? And it can be used for all sorts of things, working out you know, how many people you need on tech support lines and so, and so on. So these values can vary, the weightings can vary, so you can add in the weightings that you would do. Always, always remember, it's a common mistake, that if you change the weightings, you'll need to add them together to, to uh, calculate how much you should divide that by. And this is a three-month moving average. Uh, if we wanted a four- or five-month moving average, we would follow the same procedure here. So now we uh, can look at the actual and predicted sales and also and visualize them on these two simple charts. So the actual sales here are the second and third column, the month plotted against the sales figure. So I've got my sales figures here, and I've got my values over the 12-month period from January to December 2022. And you can see it's up and down a little bit here, so the overall trend is not terribly obvious. When I plot the uh, months against the three-month weighted moving average, as I've done in the predicted sales chart down here at the end, uh, we can see that, first of all, we lose the first three values. So that's why I have th values of uh, zero down here on my chart. And really, the chart starts here at this uh, fourth value for April. 
and we can see then that our chart is a little bit smoother and the overall trend is uh, a, a little bit easier to analyze. And of course, we've got our predicted value for January in here as well, which we don't have on the actual sales chart. So it might be useful to use this tool to uh, get a visualization of data over a period of time. So let's take a look at some more elaborate data here. I'm going to use, as I did in the simple moving average lesson, uh, Facebook closing stock uh, downloaded from Yahoo Finance for the year 2021. And I'm going to use a weighted moving average. And instead of doing a three point moving average as I've done up till now, I'm going to use a four point moving average. I've decided that my weightings are um, two for the most recent time period, 1.75 for the next most recent, that's T minus two, 1.50 for T minus three, and 1.25 for t minus 4. So put that into my formula here, my forecasted time, which is for the next period, a weighting of 2 for actual t minus 1, plus a weighting of 1.75 for actual t minus 2, plus a weighting of 1.50 by actual for t minus 3, and plus a weighting of 1.25 by actual for t minus 4. So I've got four time periods there, and as before, we're giving more prominence, a higher weighting to the most recent time periods. Add up the weightings, we get 6.5, so that's what we're going to divide our results by. So now how to section, I'll show you how to do this, but this is the plot of uh, Facebook's closing stock for the year 2021, from the 1st of January, beginning of January, right up until the end of December. So it's my four-point weighted moving average using the data, that, using the formula we, we just looked at. We can see over at the very left-hand side, we lose the first four values because we need to use um, uh, four points to calculate the first predicted value. And then we calculate the predicted values all the way through, and we see we're having the effect of smoothening out the, the troughs and the peaks on our blue line, which is the actual data there. And in fact, if I remove the blue line, we can see the overall trend a little bit easier, and this is using a four-point weighted moving average. You could have used, of course, use a five or a six or a seven-point weighted moving average, which would make our curve even smoother. So it's useful for looking for trends over a period of time. So in your assignment for this, I'm going to get you to create your own stock chart. I use Yahoo Finance, but you can download data from wherever you get your financial data. And um, I downloaded one year's worth of data. Yahoo Finance allows you to download uh, you know, up to five years uh, or lifetime sets of data. Or if you only want to do three months or six months, of course, you can do that. So I want you to create your own stock, stock chart. Uh, use a three-point weighted moving average for, to start out, which you can vary this yourself, and use weightings of 3.0, 2.5, and 1.5, uh, giving the highest weighting to the most recent time period and the lowest weighting to the, to the furthest out time period. Use this to make some predictions, and also use the visuals, uh, the charts to visualize the overall trends and compare, uh, for example, um, forecast versus actual demand. So more about that in the assignment lesson following this. So in summary, a weighted moving average is a basic time series technique for making predictions. It averages the demand for a number, 3 to 7, there can be more, but 3 to 7 would be usual, of the most recent time periods. For a three-point weighted moving average, the forecast of time, which is FT, is calculated by weighting the three most recent actual times, AT minus 1, AT minus 2, and AT minus 3, and dividing by the sum of weights. Don't forget, AT minus 1 is the one that usually gets the highest weighting, and AT minus 3, or the last one, will get the lowest weighting. Finally, weighted moving averages can be used to visualize trends over a period of time by smoothening out the data. So that's how you use weighted moving averages. I hope you found this lesson useful.